Mr. Schultz of Germany, the head of the German government, is visiting China with chairman level, CEO level of major German companies like Mercedes, like Siemens, and so on. Two days will be spent looking at the economic side, visiting Chongqing and Shanghai, and then one day for political discussions in Beijing. What we have is a situation in which the U.S. continues to want to suppress China's development in terms of manufacturing of these actually very important green products, products that will help address climate change. But Germany is beginning to take a different stance. In fact, the head of the German Automobile Association, the chief lobbyist force in Germany for the sector, have declared that uh, we don't want disengagement from China. and We have to collaborate with China. And the reason is actually quite simple, because if U.S. continues to block Chinese products, it will push EU countries, especially Germany, to do the same. Now, what happens in the EU if there is imposition of all kinds of duties or blockage of Chinese EVs uh, into Europe? There will be retaliatory action. Now, who gets hurt? The Germans get hurt. Because in terms of figures, Germany's largest trading partner for the last eight years has been China. In terms of further figures, a total investment by German companies in China last year reached nearly 12 billion euros. What are we looking at? We're looking at a very deeply integrated, very closely aligned and deeply engaged, not disengaged, economies. So under these circumstances, I don't think there is any possibility that the Germans will take action. Maybe mouth only, they will mouth something, they will say something, but in concrete terms, they will not commit suicide by blocking or disengaging from the Chinese market or the Chinese manufacturing supply chain or the continued increase in investment and increase in trade between the two sides. Not only that, in terms of European produced electric vehicles, increasingly the components, the software, the electronics, and so on and so forth, are made in China too. So this will also impact on their import-export with China in terms of their trade with China. So I think for very practical and very pragmatic reasons, Germany would not want to see further escalation of the conflict in terms of electric vehicles in particular, also, of course, solar and batteries as well. The escalation of this conflict between the West and China, and this is the beginning of a, a more profound split in terms of policy between Europe and the U.S., and this is all based on very concrete terms in terms of the Europeans, because do you want to participate or do you want to forego the largest automobile market in the world? And that's the Chinese market. Now, in terms of the U.S., continuation of this suppression of Chinese products does not help the U.S. in the medium or the long term. In the medium term, of course, they will end up, the American consumer, paying a lot more for lesser quality products. Meanwhile, will the U.S. automakers catch up? I don't think so. Even some experts on the auto sector have said, even if they tried, they cannot catch up for 8 to 10 years, if at all. So you end up no pressure. You're protected by the government with protectionism, with blockage of Chinese products, also with custom duties. With all these things, there's lesser of a need to be more efficient, to improve your products, to become more competitive because you're protected. Under those circumstances, they will never catch up. So on the one hand, on the U.S. side, there's less competition with protectionism. On the Chinese side, there's more competition, there's more demand from the domestic market and Southeast Asian market, and increasingly the Middle Eastern market for Chinese electric vehicles. If Europe remains fairly open, the competition would destroy whatever product the U.S. car makers can come up with. 
So ultimately, this is using a Chinese expression for the U.S. is lifting a stone to drop on one's own foot. On the European side, uh, they're beginning to realize that they can't follow the same path, and they will probably have serious divergence with the U.S. on the sector, on these issues, on the electric vehicles sector in particular. We will see what happens with this trip, but I think it's quite clear that the German team is here to talk about collaboration, not about further suppression of China's rise.